Father, by your Holy Spirit, take complete control right now.
that you are deserving of it all. Despite whatever goes on around us, we know that you are still in command. So we look to you. We worship you for who you are. And today we just want to give you thanks. Today we want you to have all the honor and glory. In Jesus' name. Well, God is faithful in me. Yes, he is. I just want to stop just for a second and just say thank you so much again. I, you know, I, I know I do it every week, but I, I I really want everybody to know how how hard, you know, these different teams are working. You know, they're, they're really putting in a lot of effort to come up here and do some great things. So I actually didn't want to miss any names, so I wrote, <laughs> wrote them down because I'm horrible with names. But, I, you know, for the worship team, I like to say thank you to Caleb and, of course, Hess and Melanie and Renee and, Craig and Kyle and of course Bill and my beautiful, lovely wife, Miss Julia. And then behind the camera that you guys don't see, only time you ever see them is when they kind of sneak in around the corner and one of them catches the other one in, in the video. But uh Justin and Anthony. And, and you know, I can never say thank you enough, guys. You guys work really hard and uh y'all really have the spirit of excellence about you. I know the, the cameras at us and I'm talking but I'm talking to Justin and Anthony. And, you know, just thank them. You know, if you get an opportunity, just, just say thank you to them because it's because of them we're able to put all this on. Yes. You know, we show up with our notes and prayed up and have our word and our heart. But, man, these guys put it out there. So thank you so much, guys. Appreciate you. We want to really kind of um, do a couple of things. I, you know, I, I just feel so prompt. You know, Anthony was praying before we start, and he was talking about how we wanted, you know, this message to reach people that's never reached before. And so maybe there are some people watching this that were watching before. So before we even start, I, I'm going to pray for those who are watching real quick. So, Father, I thank you again for this amazing day. My wife and I come in agreement together. And, Father, I pray right now that those who are watching, God, you know their hearts. You know their needs. You know their situations. You know their finances. You know their health. You know what's going on in their families, their children. And, God, I pray that, God, I pray that you just touch them, watch over them. God, God, those who have never darkened the doors of church, maybe perhaps they've been watching the program. And God, the anointing has touched them. The lives are touched and forever changed. God, I pray when we get ready to join back together in the body of Christ, God, I pray they come and their lives will never be the same. We thank you again for all that you've done. We thank you for this word. Blessings be upon this time together. In Jesus' powerful, holy name. Amen. Uh, Julie and I were talking this week. And we were really talking about how, basically, uh, we're all given a choice to make. And actually, we wrote down, how do we choose to see the good in the storm? How do we see the, how do you choose to see the good or the bad? You know, I think we should choose to see the good. I, I know that for many of us going through this, and, and as I said before, you know, I've never been through anything like this, and I don't think anybody in this room has been through anything like this. But you know what? I have to believe, again, what I said in the very beginning, you know, God's got this. Yes, You absolutely. know, God's got all this in his hand. And, and for whatever reason, you know, I choose to believe that something good is going to come out of this. Now, I know there are people that are suffering financially. I know there's people suffering for different reasons. But I have to believe that something amazing is going to come out of this. You know, and so I choose to believe something good. And so, you know, when we were talking about this and, and we were kind of just bouncing some things off of each other and we was asking some questions, how, how do we choose to see the good? And the first thing I thought about is you got to you got to purposely choose. You got to choose with purpose. Absolutely. And I thought about how even, you know, when you, when you look at the story of uh, uh, Joseph, in the scripture. You know, Joseph, let's just say it for what it is, and I know some might be offended the way I say this, but he went through hell. I mean, he really went through the pits of hell. I mean, here's a guy who uh, goes and he, and he sees, he has a vision, and he goes to his brothers, and, and in his innocence, because of his youth, he went to his brothers and shared with them some things he thought. And of course, by sharing what he said he saw in a dream, 
it, it really made his brothers mad and upset him. And so we know the story. He went out to go bring him some food and they decided to get rid of him. You know, and that's where we get the, the, the uh, Joseph, the coat of many colors, because they took his coat and they covered it with some goat's blood and they brought it to his father and he said he was dead. Now, originally they threw him in a well and then they decided, hey, listen, let's not just put him in a well, let's kill him. And so his other brother went back and got him out of the well and sold him into slavery, which he went into Potiphar's house. He goes into Potiphar's house. Now, we read the story and, and we read it and it takes a short period of time to read it. And so in our mind, we think it was just a small period of time he went through. But he went, he grew up through all this. I mean, years went by. Here's a guy, he goes to Potiphar's house and because of the anointing, because he, he continued to choose God in his life, even though he was a slave in Potiphar's house, he rose to the top. He became the top guy in the house. Yeah. Now we know the story where Potiphar's wife decided she wanted to sleep with him and he knew that was wrong and he didn't want to do it. And she got mad and accused him, took his coat and told her husband that he raped him. Tried to rape her. Tried to rape her yeah. And he got thrown in prison. Now here's the guy who goes to prison. Again, you know, the favor of the Lord follows this guy because he puts God first. The scripture says, seek you first, the kingdom of God. Everything else you stand in need of, he's going to supply. And so he puts God first, he goes to prison, and, and again, he rises to the top in, in, in the prison. Now, why is he in a prison? The, the, from the palace, you have the, I think it was the uh, baker and the uh, uh, cupbearer. Cup yeah. And so these guys, you know, he shared with them a dream and, you know, and, and of course, one of them goes back to the palace and he says, don't forget me when you go back to the palace. Well, you know what they did? They forgot him. And so again, now he's still in prison. All this time goes by and the king has a dream. And it comes and, and nobody could interpret the dream. So finally, he says, look, there was a guy that I was in prison with that interpret dreams. And so go get him. So now they go and get him, goes down there, he comes up, he interprets the dream. Because of his interpretation, he literally saves Egypt from going to, to, to bankruptcy, so to speak, during this time. Yeah. And, and, the, and now the Pharaoh, the king, puts him like second in charge. So he rises to the top again. Why? Because he puts God first in his life. At any moment when he was going through his difficulties, when the next wave or the next storm came along, he could have thrown up his hands and started being like, God One more forgot, time. God forgot me. Yeah. I'm just going to quit this. I, he, you know, God didn't keep his promise. And he could have thrown his hands up and quit. He really could. You know what's so funny, Julia? I hear that from people all the time. When things don't go the way they think it should go, immediately they throw their hands up and say, Oh, God forgot me or God don't love me or whatever. Why did, why did God let this happen? Right. You know, but here's a guy again, he chose the purpose of his life. He chose God. He put God first in his life. Now here's the part that really throws a lot of people a curve. Again, he had a, he had a purpose in his life and he goes and he rises to the top. Now here's his brothers who come who need food. And, and it's a long story and I don't want to take all the time telling the whole story. But they go through the whole process. He supplies them food. Now he brings his father. He brings Benjamin, his baby brother over there. He takes care of all of his family. The father dies. Now the brothers think now that daddy's dead, he's going to kill us. And so they go and they, they, they fall at his feet like, you know, please don't kill us. And he starts to weep and he cries. And he says, and this is what he says. And, and this is the part that really blows my mind. He said, you chose this, or, or how do you say it? No, you meant this for my evil or my bad. And he said, but yet God meant it for my good. You know, who's to say that, that Joseph would not have had the integrity he had once he was in that position and, and uh, Leadership. as second yeah. in charge of the whole kingdom of Egypt, had he not gone through those things that, that refined his character, that I'm not going to quit. I'm not right. going to quit. Every battle he faced, he had to choose whether he was going to keep going or quit. And, um, you know, it, our character grows during times of adversity. Our character doesn't grow during the easy, fluffy stuff. That's right. It's easy to do what's right when everything's going right. Right. But character comes when we choose to do what's right in spite of how things are going. And so here's a guy, like I said, he, he rises to the top, and yet he chooses at this point, and he says, 
again, he says, I'm not going to do anything wrong to you. I'm not going to hurt you because, you know, because you made it from my evil. God made it from my good. And that's the same thing when we're going through this difficult virus. You know, whatever Satan is intended for evil, God can turn for his glory. I believe with all my heart that people are hearing the gospel now because there are so many people putting it out there that people are listening. They're paying attention. And I, I believe that that by the grace of God, the church is going to be so packed a year from now, there's not going to be enough buildings around here for it. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, I really believe that God's going to do something amazing. And so not only do we have to choose with a purpose, but we, we can't do anything halfway. That's right. You know, we can't do it half-hearted. You know, there, you know, even even in uh, Revelations, he said, don't want you hot or cold. Don't straddle the fence. Be hot or cold. Be hot or cold. And, and you know, one of the things I, I thought about halfway was there's a story in Ezekiel when he's talking about the temple. You remember this story? Yes. And, and he's talking about the flood and, he, and the water rising in the temple. And he talks about how at one point it was ankle deep. Then it was knee deep. Then it was waist deep. And But here's the part here. Every part of the way, when it was ankle, when it was waist, when it was knee deep, all these things, at any given time, he could have got out. Yep. You know, but yet he came to a point where he finally said it was over his head. He dove in. Had to swim. Had to swim. And see, that's the thing with us. You know, we can't do anything half heartedly. If we're going to choose life with God, because what does he say in one place? He says, I lay before you life and death. And then he gives us the answer. Therefore, choose life. Because that's what it's there for. That's what it's there for. That's right. <laughs> all the comedians, and we got Drew Gannaway on us. She's here all night. <laughs> but, you know, these are things that we really have to look at if we're going to really choose what's right. Exactly. If we're going to if we're going to make the right choice in seasons of testing, we're going to have to cast our nets on the other side. And I'll explain to you what I mean by this. Is um, I love the story where the disciples had gone out fishing, and they the Bible says they fished all night and caught nothing. And all of a sudden, Jesus is walking along the shore, and he yells at them, hey, have you caught anything? And they're like, no, and we have told or worked our best. We've done everything we know to do all night. We've caught nothing. And Jesus said, well, why, how about you try your net on the other side? And I can imagine in their, their fleshly way of thinking. Their frustration. Man, or who, do you, who do you think we are? We are exhausted. Mm -hmm. We're fixing to come in. We're professional right? fishermen. We're professionals. We got this, right? And... Um, but they had to be willing to do it different, different, a different way than they had been doing it to get a different result. And, you know, sometimes when we're going through a season, um, just like even the way we normally do church, we, right. we're not able to do church like we normally do church right now. Right. And Jesus is going, how about you do it this way? The message hasn't changed. The methods changed. But the methods we're using to reach people all over the world has um, evolved. Evolved and continues to do so. But what about those who are saying, well, you know what? We're forsaking the assembly because we're not meeting inside of a building. Well, when we all are coming into agreement in faith, when we're right. watching a service online, when we're, um, when we're praying for one another like we ought to, because we're doing it different doesn't mean that um, that we're not doing it the right way, right. right? Most of the time what I have found is um, we get stuck in our traditions or in our way of doing things. But in order to keep growing and keep evolving um, spiritually in our life, going from glory to glory, we have to be willing. Um, I heard a preacher say one time, if you want to see God move in ways you've never seen him move, you got to be willing to move in ways you can or do things you've never done, right? Right. And so um, we have to be be willing to do things different than we've done before if we're going to get different Can results. you imagine if uh, if something like this would have happened? And I don't know. I, I mean, you can fill in a blank on this one. Uh, how long have we had the technology of uh, 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 live streaming and, and, and the technology of Facebook and the technology that we have that we can put it out there the way we do? Today, I mean, most people today with an iPhone can be a producer, right? You know, and that technology wasn't around that long ago. And at one time, if you weren't a very wealthy religious organization, you could have anything like you this. You didn't have a TV program. You didn't have you a know, way of 
netting it out there. Exactly. You know, but praise God that that we can do that now, and it, it really leads to really the next one. You know, we choose life, or we choose the good in spite of the storm when we see the ordinary. You know, we have to see God in the ordinary. Exactly. You know, I think too many times we we are looking around and we thinking that we expect God to show up in some, you know, big boom, so to speak. You know, and 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 the truth, He says that we know that He's God by the rising and the setting of the sun. I think I, I remember the story where Elijah was hiding in a cave mm -hmm. and he was crying out, "God, let me see Your face! God, let me see Your face! God, I need to see You!" Right. And um, and so he waited, and God told him, he said, go hide in the cleft of the rock. And he said that there was a, a cloud, a fire, a pillar of fire that, that came by, and he looked to see God in the pillar of fire, but he wasn't there. And then he looked to, to see God in the whirlwind, but he wasn't there in the whirlwind. But he saw God in that still, small voice. He heard God in that still, small voice. And I think right now god's trying to get us back to seeing him in the ordinary everything day things of life because we have gotten to the point in in our nation and in our lives where we live such a fast microwave mentality right. and we're stretched so thin with way more commitments than we should have that we don't have time to see god in the ordinary you know here's the thing about that julia i think a lot of times we think that we're waiting on god and God's really waiting on us. You know, if we draw nigh unto him, he draws nigh to us. And, and I was thinking about this earlier, about something as simple as uh, when we came here. And I don't remember. I don't remember how long we were here. We were here for several years. And it was on a Wednesday night. And, and I know when I start telling this story, you'll remember. But we were here on a Wednesday night. And, and I remember God speaking to me something as simple. And we were going into the new year. And... He spoke to me and said, I want you to borrow your real estate license. You remember this? Mm -hmm. And I remember thinking, man, hey, God, why, why would I do that? Why would I want to burn my real estate license? Something as simple as that. And then all of a sudden, it was uh, Jean Adams was on the worship team. And she came down and she just said, Pastor, I feel like I was supposed to say something. I said, what is it? Well, God wants me to tell you there, you know, uh, um, how did she say it? There's nothing worth holding on to. There's nothing worth holding on to. And when she said that to me, it really struck me. And I thought, well, okay, maybe God is trying to get me to do something here. And so, long story short, I did. That year, I always renewed my real estate license because, you know, for those who have the real estate license, you know how hard it is to get. But all of a sudden, I decided that I was going to get rid of my real estate license that year. And I burned it for January 1. We burned it. And all of a sudden, God really began to, to deal with me. Because without even me knowing it, I was holding on to it, thinking if this pastor thing don't work out, I can go back to selling real estate. You know, and 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 we don't we we want to think that God and, and just to, just to kind of give a, a, a part of the story, we begin to grow from that. I mean, it was all of a sudden we started growing because I realized that if you got a plan B, you better make a good one. And I'm saying that going back to what you're talking about, the ordinary. You know. Sometimes it's something as simple as right in front of you that God is trying to get your attention. That, you know, in the, in the natural, we think, why in the world would God make me do something like that? What, what purpose would, would be getting rid of my real estate license? But God wanted to do something supernatural with something as ordinary as that. Yeah. You know, and so that's when we have to really stop and say, okay, God. How, how can we choose to see the good in the storm? And here's one here that I, 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 I love. is the fact is, number one, we have to realize that the same spirit that rose Jesus Christ from the dead dwells in you and I. Yeah. The same spirit. Now, I don't know about you, but sometimes I have to just stop and say it two or three times to really get my, my mind around. But he says the same spirit, Anthony, the same spirit that rose Christ from the dead dwells in us. Isn't that amazing? I mean, he says things we're going to do, he did, we're going to do. I, I can't even put my mind around that one. You know? Greater things. Than Greater things. Yeah. And then you have to go back. Not only does he say the same spirit that rose Christ from the dead dwells in us, but he also says, 
Listen, he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He doesn't change just because difficulty comes. No. He remains the same. He remains steadfast. He remains true to his promise. He remains faithful. And even when we are faithless, he remains faithful because he won't deny himself. You know, Julia, I don't, I don't even know why. You know, sometimes I, I get emotional thinking about certain things. And, and I guess it's still fresh because it's only been about a year that my dad passed. You know, and I was very, very close to my father. And you know that. And, and the people around me know that. But I remember as a boy when, when the storm would come and, and he was off working, I was scared to death. Like, like, like he was going to hold the house up or something. But when he was there, I could go to bed with all the peace in the world, you know? And, and that's the same thing we need to know. We need to know that the father, that, you know, a great picture of, of the heavenly father is our earthly father. And I know some of you don't have a good picture. I, I fortunately I did. I had a father who, uh, when people talked about how much the father, heavenly father loved us, I didn't have a hard time getting my mind around it because my dad loved me. But, you know, if you think about the same spirit that rose Christ from the dead dwells in us, that same spirit that I believed as a boy was in my father was going to protect me in the storm is the same spirit that's going to protect us Abba. in, in yeah, I'm a father. Yeah. My daddy, you know? Yeah, daddy God. Daddy God, you know? And, and you know, I just, I, I, I love that. I love thinking about that, which really leads us to the last one. And, and we'll both elaborate on this one. But if we're going to really choose the good in the middle of a storm, is we have to be eternal mind. Yeah. We have to have an eternal mindset. We got to realize that, man, life is but a vapor. You know, exactly. he says life is here today and gone tomorrow. You know, when you realize that even, even, even a year from now, we won't remember a lot of this. You know why? Because our mindset should be on the things of God. It should be on temporary. Things. Difficulties come. They come and they go. Start they go. They go. And they will come again. Mm-hmm. But what is eternal is what matters. Are we laying up treasures um, in eternity? Are we living with an eternal mindset? Are we concerned? Um, you know, as parents, are we imparting the things into our kids that have an eternal value? Or are we so caught up in the temporary things? You know, I, it's it's almost like, you know, I can, I can see God saying, all right, I'm going to take away all your distractions. Yeah. So you can be still for just a little while and you know, right? I'm going to take away your sports. I'm going to take away your concerts. I'm going to take away your movie theaters. I'm going to take away even maybe your religious mm. practices so that you can really know me oh and know what's important to me. You know, I think we have a lot of idols in our life that we don't even realize that have taken the place of um, the spirit of the Lord and, our, and priority in our lives. And, um, you know, we, we've got to come back to a place where we have to realize that only the treasures that we lay up in heaven are the only things that will last. You know, I, uh, I'm processing, thinking that this would be appropriate to say or not. Uh, I, I met a, I met a, a, up with a friend of mine today and I was talking to him and he was telling me about one of his sons several years ago had a, a baby boy that had Down syndrome. And, you know, when you hear that, you immediately want to think of something, oh, that's horrible. He said it literally changed their lives in a positive way. So well, what do you mean? He said, you know what, if we can only love like that boy loves, he don't see bad in nothing. He sees only the good, you know. And, and I begin to think that, you know what, that's how we should be with this eternal mindset. We shouldn't see the, the bad in it. We should always see the good in it because God is good. Yeah, all the time. God is faithful, yeah. you know. And just like he said, this, this boy changed your life. He says, he, he, he helps me love in ways I, I, I didn't love before. He helps me see people in ways I, I couldn't see before. 
And boy, the whole time he's telling me this, I'm getting choked up because I'm thinking, wow, that's powerful. But isn't that what a relationship with Christ should do to us, right? Mm -hmm. We should be able to love like we never loved before and see the good in things that we've never seen before and the eternal value in, in others that we've never seen before, right? You know, Julia, I just, I, I hope that, I hope the people that are watching this really, really, maybe, maybe they're struggling in, in some areas, that they begin to choose the good things, begin to choose to see the good in, in, in spite of what you're listening to in, in the media. You know, I, and I kind of sum up a few things. You know, to see the good, to choose to see the good, is we have to choose on purpose. Absolutely. We have to choose on purpose. We have we have to be wholehearted, not half-hearted. We have to, uh, uh, what's the one? Cast our nets on the other side. Yeah. Be willing to do some things different, not the way we used to do it, and, and, and be okay with it. Yeah. It's not wrong, it's just different. And then the uh, uh, the other one was... Choose to see him in the ordinary. To choose to see him in the ordinary. You know, yeah. just trust that we know these guys about the rising and set of the sun. In the simple things, like the simple things of this young boy, you know, right. and then to trust that the same spirit that dwelled in Christ Jesus and rose him from the dead is the same spirit that lives in us, and he is the same today, yesterday, and forever. And then the last one is simply this whatever we do, we have to have an eternal mindset. We can't think just for the moment, we have to think forever. You know, eternal. Right. You know, if you're watching and you don't know Christ as your Savior, you know, we, we want to trust that you can know Him as your Savior. You know, we're going to pray in just a moment, but, you know, we always want to make sure we, we give an opportunity for those who have never accepted Christ. If you're watching this for the first time, you know, you simply have to trust and believe. You, we repent of our sins. First of all, we have to recognize that we're sinners. And when we recognize that we're sinners, and only Christ can save us through grace. Mm -hmm. We're saved by grace, not of our works. Let any man boast. You know, the wages of sin is death. But you can choose life by simply saying, Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Come into my heart. Save me of my sins. And we believe if you pray that prayer, that God does do exactly what he says he's going to do. And to have an eternal mindset is to know that one day, one day we're going to go and be with him. And it'll be worth it all. You know, I, I always love the story of, of David. And, and David, who cried and fasted and prayed for his son, when his son finally passed, his servants was reluctant to even tell him. And he looked up and finally he said, my son's passed. And yes, King David, your, your son's passed. And the Bible says David did something that we all should take note to. He got up, he dusted himself off, and he went to the house of God to worship. He came back, he said, let's have a feast. Servants were kind of like, what in the world is up with that? And finally one of them asked him, and he simply said that. He said, you know, there's nothing I can do to bring him back. But the hope that I have is to one day go be with him. That's eternal mindset. Yeah. You know, there's nothing we can do in some situations, but the eternal mindset is to know that everything's going to be okay. Because God is in control. And so we're going to pray. Let's pray together for those who are watching. And Father, in Jesus' name, God, maybe there's some people today that are having a really difficult time choosing the good in the middle of the storm. God, I pray you wrap your arms around them. Let them know that everything's going to be okay. Let them begin to choose life with a purpose, God. Let them know that you have everything worked out already. So God, as we draw nigh unto you, as we draw near to you, God, draw near to your people. So God, we ask you right now to bless those who are watching, bless those who maybe accepted Christ in their hearts for the first time. Let them know that we're rejoicing together. And God, I thank you right now that you're going to do amazing things, and not only in our church and in the people in this church, but God, we pray for all the churches in this community. God, we lift up Cooper Baptist Church, and we lift up Hope, and we lift up uh, the Assembly of God Church, and East Leesville Baptist Church, and Rivers 
of living water and family worship center and household of prayer and all the churches that preach the gospel in this community. God, we lift them up and we ask you just to wrap your arms around their people. God, those who are struggling, God, let them, let them begin to choose the good in whatever's happening. Let them see that God has everything in his hand. Let them know that everything's in control by you. So God, we thank you for that. So bless us be upon this word, we pray in Jesus' powerful name. Amen and amen. amen. Again, thank you so much for watching. Uh, I know from Julia and myself, we miss you. Uh, we can't wait to see you. Also, just a reminder to say thank you to those who have just been so faithful with their tithes and their offering, uh, giving online or coming by, dropping it off. Thank you so much for supporting this ministry, and we're able to support all our missionaries across the globe. And so thank you for that. But also, again, you know, we say it every week, it won't be long. It won't be long. We'll see you soon. And, and we know that God has everything worked out. So we love you. We miss you. And we'll see you soon. And Pastor told me to wait. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>